uh, first of all, everyone, thanks for uh, joining me today. I'm uh, sitting out on my back patio here in Florida. Uh, you will catch it in my speech patterns uh, that I'm originally uh, from Canada, but all you know, middle-aged Canadians end up in Florida eventually. So here I am. Um, what I want to take you through today is a little bit, and I'm going to kill my camera to save on bandwidth, um, the threats that uh, higher ed K-12 are facing. Um, you're probably asking yourself, what gives this guy the right to tell me about education? Well, prior to joining uh, Tri-Micro back in 2007, uh, I worked for a Canadian college slash university hybrid, uh, ended up running security by the end of it, sitting in the C seat and uh, faced an awful lot of challenges. Uh, luckily, uh, we happened upon Trend Micro as a, an up and comer uh, in the security space and never looked back. Um, so let me give you uh, a little bit about Trend. Uh, first of all, we have a great uh, CEO in Eva Chen. She's one of the co-founders. It was actually uh, her original ideas um, that helped build this company. Um, we have a great company motto, and that is to make the world safe for exchanging digital information, because ultimately that's what we do every day, all of us. Uh, it's been cybersecurity focused for 30 years. Uh, it is a singular focus company uh, on virtualization, cloud, uh, AI, uh, writing style analysis, DNA, uh, to stop business email compromise. Uh, we do Internet of Things security in regards to reputation, uh, specialized for both IoT at home and industrial uh, IoT uh, as well. We have been profitable every quarter, including this past year, uh, since going public in 1998. Uh, we did one and a half billion in 2019. Uh, not exactly I'm sure they've crunched all the numbers for 2020 yet, but I know we were uh, in the same ballpark. We have over half, uh, or half a million uh, commercial customers uh, in the U.S., 6,800 um, passionate people from around the globe. Actually, uh, we're closer to 7,100 as of last week. And we have an awful lot of sensors around the world uh, powering our smart protection network. I'm just going to flash this real quick um, because, you know, I wouldn't be a company if I didn't show you what we sold. Um, a lot of people think of Trend Micro as simply an antivirus company, and that couldn't be farther from the truth. That is our roots, um, but that's not uh, where we are today. Our primary focus is around hybrid cloud environments uh, with AWS, Azure, Google, so on and so forth. Uh, and we'll delve into that a little bit towards the end. But the reason you're here. What's going on with education? Well, I think education is kind of in a bit of a crisis. Uh, I do call it the edu crisis, and that uh, educational institutions uh, need to make cybersecurity a priority. Now, despite the sector facing a lot of challenges, uh, especially around lack of staffing and worse, mass, uh, lack of funding and resources, uh, cyber attacks are no less frequent or less severe in education. In fact, they seem to be gaining ground in prevalence uh, on year on year as instances of breaches in schools and higher education are very widely reported. Now, in recent years, we've seen a number of uh, ransom attacks causing financial damage. Uh, one of my counterpart Canadian universities, luckily not the one I was from, um, handed over $20,000 to cyber criminals uh, during a ransomware attack. Now it was 20,000 Canadian dollars, so I think that works out to be uh, about 1750 US, uh, and I mean $17.50. Uh, but anyways, uh, malware attacks are causing mass disruption in higher ed especially, um, and it's very similar to the disruption which caused a Minnesota school district to shut down for a day, day and a half. Uh, while the IT uh, staff rebuilt the entire system from the ground up. Uh, the more worrying breaches are where student safety is compromised, obviously, because that, had, that has the connotation of liability, right, and damages. Uh, educational institutions are entrusted to safeguard their students, um, many of whom are minors, but a weak cybersecurity infrastructure can put them at risk, right? Uh, it was made all too clear back when the CCTV uh, in Blackpool was allegedly breached and the footage was posted uh, up on the web. 
which is never good. It is an unfortunate fact that while well, cybersecurity and education is necessary to protect against financial loss and prevent disruption, it's also very crucial to protect those students from harm. Um, and that's why this sector needs to do everything it can to ensure their applications and systems are protected and work to overcome any challenges. Now, that's always a challenge in education because money is an object. Uh, we all know that. Um, but there are uh, very fine reasons, uh, I think, from the uh, time of dabbling in the dark arts of why education is a target for cybercrime. And uh, education venues vary in size and purpose, even stature. Uh, the motives for the attacks can vary. Uh, what might be a common threat for a world-renowned university or college might not be an issue for schools or school districts. So institutions themselves need to evaluate the risk and understand the data that's vulnerable to unauthorized access. Now, uh, some of the methodologies, of course, are distributed denial of service attacks. They're a common type of attack on all levels uh, of education venue. And obviously, the attacker's motive is to cause widespread disruption to either the institute's network or worse, um, performing attacks against others, which again uh, has some uh, significant uh, potential for liability concerns. Um, it's a relatively easy attack for an amateur cyber criminal to carry out. As a matter of fact, uh, you can go online and uh, really, quote unquote, buy the attack and have it executed for you. Uh, there have been instances of students or teachers successfully carrying out denial of service attacks uh, with motives, motives really ranging from uh, wanting a day off. Uh, I live in Florida, Hillsborough County. Uh, we recently had, uh, just last year, a student that didn't want to write some exams. Uh, so they uh, slowed things down is a good way to put it. Um, or, you know, protesting you know, the way a complaint was handled, so on and so forth. Uh, the second, and I think this is um, the primary reason uh, most educational institutions are targeted, is data theft. And that attack uh, really does affect all levels of education because institutions hold student staff data, uh, including sensitive details like names, addresses, uh, in some cases, medical information. And this type of information can be very, very valuable to cyber criminals, but for several reasons. Uh, they may plan to sell the information to a third party. Um, sometimes they use it as a bargaining tool uh, to perform uh, extortion. The concerning aspect of this type of attack is that hackers can go unnoticed for very long periods of time. I'm sure we're all familiar with California University where 160,000 plus medical records were allegedly stolen from the university computers uh, over a number of months. And uh, I believe they'll be paying uh, for those damages for a long, uh, long time. Uh, the other reason, financial gain. Uh, of course, this might not be as high risk for public schools, but with private institutions and universities and colleges handling large number of student fees, it's a prime target for cyber criminals. And especially with distance ed, where you're paying your fees uh, through uh, payment portals. Uh, it, the portals need to be uh, very well secured. It's unusual for students or parents to pay fees. Um, it's not unusual, pardon me, for students or, uh, or students or, or parents to pay those fees over the portals, and they do transfer large sums of money, um, often a whole year of tuition, and uh, that that can be a very weak spot for cyber criminals to intercept uh, traffic. The last. And for anybody that's on the line uh, that's from uh, universities, uh, especially in the research field, is espionage. Uh, in the case of higher ed, um, they're often centers for research and they hold very valuable intellectual property. Uh, universities and colleges need to be suitably protected. And it's thought that scientific engineering, medical research uh, by UK universities have been compromised by hackers. I've seen information from some UK universities uh, available online for a surprisingly low fee. Um, so you need to be suitably protected. And uh, with these four motives in mind, the way in which hackers carry out an attack on education networks um, can further help us really uh, understand how to protect them. Uh, which brings us to our next 
point, um, and that is how education is targeted. Now, we questioned IT professionals within uh, further education and higher education uh, space. Um, they were asked to name the top cyber threats facing their institutions, and the top three answers gave us insight into the most common ways education networks are breached. And surprisingly, they're not that much different uh, than when I left that space back in 2006. And number one is phishing. Uh, phishing scams often take the form of an email, instant message. Uh, they're designed to trick the user into trusting the source as fraudulent and attempt to access either the user's credentials or drop something uh, inside the network. And that could be sensitive student data, confidential research, so on and so forth. The type of attack itself uh, is highlighted as the top threat facing higher ed venues, um, suggesting that hackers regularly target uh, the sector using this method. Now, uh, I will point you to uh, something that's free uh, from Trend Micro called Fish Insight. That's P H I S H. Um, and Fish Insight is a free service uh, that you can utilize uh, to really test uh, your environment uh, and also provide training. Uh, and it is uh, free. So uh, be sure to uh, give that a whirl. Uh, ransomware and malware uh, are also in the top three cyber threats highlighted by the report. Um, ransomware and malware attacks prevent users from accessing the network or files that cause disruption. They're more advanced forms um, we see uh, in, in the wild that hold files to ransom, aka ransomware. Um, it typically infects devices using a Trojan or a file attachment disguised to look legitimate, uh, quite often tagged to phishing. Um, this is part of this it normally occurs to staff and students that don't have adequate training. Um, although I've fallen victim to myself and running to the airport at, at 5 a.m. and you get an invoice that you're you know, supposed to take a look at. Oh, oh damn. Uh, now you're putting in a call to the after hours uh, security desk. So uh, that is uh, certainly a concern. And that ties into our third point. And then this lack of awareness. Um, the third threat was listed by professionals in all aspects of education. Um, and that is, uh, I think, on part because um, it's hard to train people to practice good cyber hygiene or accidentally compromise the network uh, when it's a very dynamic environment, uh, such as education is. Now, despite taking on different appearances, human error plays a key part in each of these three education uh, sectors, cybersecurity threats. With better overall security training and awareness, uh, especially on the motives and the methods of the attackers, education venues can better protect themselves against cyber attacks. Um, this sector is still facing challenges, which hinders progress significantly. And I'll point you to some uh, resources as well. Uh, free resources that Tramicro has to help educate uh, everything from uh, or everyone from uh, kindergarten up. And check my time. I'm rolling. I'll be done in two minutes. I promise, Ron. Um, now, the lack of resources and budget is a significant challenge, right? Um, it, it's points to uh, um, really to an error, I think, in judgment in a lot of the administration in that um, there's significant uh, damage potential that can occur. Um, but, you know, it, it's an educational environment. Um, it, there's very significant ways to overcome that and be very creative. And I'll point you to some of them. Uh, there is cultural issues. Obviously, bring your own device uh, is a common culture in education. Uh, that presents difficulties that uh, goes beyond almost comprehension, um, particularly with IT staff that's uh, facing very stretched uh, resources. And then, of course, an absence of policy. Setting up policies for using the network and making sure they're adhered to is uh, difficult, if not impossible, in higher ed. Um, you know, it's... Uh, unauthorized access, cyber threats are a concern. Uh, repercussions uh, can be severe for those that fall victim. Uh, unfortunately, the perpetrators quite often aren't held to the same standards. Um, there are some critical steps 
you need to take to lay the foundations for a secure IT network. And they're actually quite simple. Uh, one is training and uh, provide a basic training for all users of your network and, and rely on your vendors uh, to help provide that. Um, it can be something as simple as sharing a handbook uh, with staff and students, including information about what to look for, tips for practicing good cybersecurity hygiene, really giving people the necessary information to protect the network at all access points. Um, and that will reduce the number of incidents caused by human error, which subsequently uh, lowers the spend on uh, remediation and, uh, and fixing the damage, really. Uh, a very uh, cost-effective solution uh, in the middle there is authentication. And it's a MFA, multi-factor authentication, uh, is uh, free in some cases, uh, very minor cost in others. But including that extra security step for users who are logging onto the network will really help prevent unauthorized access. Um, a really easy to use platform should be high on your list to think, look for for an MFA provider. Um, and something to keep in mind, if users can use a platform self-sufficiently, there's less likely to be need for administrative support so the educational facilities can save on overheads without compromising network security. And uh, lastly, but definitely not least, is trusted vendors. Uh, and I point you to internetsafety.trendmicro.com. Um, these are just some of the cost-effective ways to protect your school, university, college, uh, from any form of unauthorized access. Now, uh, with the increasing frequency of, uh, and really potential security uh, severity of these cyber attacks um, and how they directly impact the education se sector itself, uh, it is crucial that uh, yourselves as IT professionals can work to find a solution to challenges um, like lack of funding. And uh, of course, I've got the lovely uh, uh, layout slide. Um, I'm going to breeze over this real quick and give you a quick little um, rundown of the resources. These are the Trend Micro resources uh, that um, I think are absolutely critical. Uh, internetsafety.trendmicro.com, of course, is uh, uh, everything in regards to our Trend Cares program. Uh, but we also have corporate social responsibility and education for schools. Uh, we have an educational uh, initiative, um, in second URL down there, that is tied directly to uh, institutes of higher learning. Uh, and of course, our research uh, link um, that has uh, significant resources in regards to what's happening in the world today.